Welcome to this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. I'm Dan, and you can find me at RFS Dan. And I'm Jess, and you can find me at Gone to the Snow Dogs and Snow Dogs Vlogs. And I'm sorry for the squeaky pup. She's digging in the couch now. I'm sorry for the puppy <laughs> noise in the background. <laughs> Just last week, just last week, we were theorizing, like, oh, this is going to be the greatest thing ever, and now it's here, and now you're just running around all crazy. For about 20 minutes before we started, it is, what are you doing? Get over here. Stop doing that. <sighs> she She's chewing on a fake plant right now. Why do you have a fake plant? I don't know. Jamie left it in the corner. Oh, she got to <laughs> leave off it. Hold on. I got to get this out of her mouth. This is great. So as we know, Jess got <laughs> Kira just the other day, and I'm sure you've seen some of the videos of her running around, but it seems like she's fresh off her nap, so she's full of energy, and Jess has been chasing her around in the basement. Jess podcasts from the from the basement. So there's really not much stuff in there, but there's a couch and apparently a fake plant that's being consumed by Kira. <laughs> uh, there's not. I have her walled off from pretty much everything in this room. Like, I have the couch and I have the dog bed and there's a little rug in here, but... You know, this is her first time being in this room as well. So she's like, oh, all the things. Everything is new. I should check it out. Get out from under there. I was really surprised to see how early uh, you were up this morning. <laughs> yeah, right? What, puppy ASMR? Look, here, right here. Yeah, right here. Right here. You want to chew on this? You want to, here, chew on this. This is more exciting. Chew on this. Does she bark? Um, When she gets frustrated. Really? <laughs> yeah, she doesn't make a lot of noise. She's actually pretty good. She's not... She's not very loud, but like she has a one of the beds she digs at upstairs, one of the dog beds. Um, when it doesn't squeak, she gets frustrated and she yells at it. So that's pretty much bless you. The only time we hear her make noise, <laughs> what do you or if you lock her in her crate and then she screams like she's dying. If she's not in her crate, then she'll just run amok. Um. Well, yeah, we're slowly working on crate training her. What's the one thing you find yourself doing the most with the puppy? Take that out of your mouth. Don't eat that. Don't eat that. Take that out of your mouth. Stop chewing on that. Don't eat that. Take that out of your mouth. Is it pretty much on par with uh, like Memphis and Shelby? Like when they were little? Um, oh, God. Shelby was 10 times worse. Oh, I take that back. Shelby was 100 times oh, worse. Okay. Okay. So, so she's she's golden then. She's good. Uh, she's worse than Memphis with putting things in her mouth. Memphis, you could tell her once and she didn't like it when you told her. We didn't necessarily like we would say no, you don't I don't like yelling at them, like actually yelling because it's it's yelling is more of like an excited type of thing. Mm -hmm. Even though you sound angry at first, they don't really know what angry is. So when you're yelling, they're like, oh, this is exciting. And I'm going <laughs> to keep doing whatever I'm doing because right. you raised your voice. And now it's fun. So uh, like I never thought of that. You, yeah. So I'm trying to do the more. And I did that with Memphis, like try to do the more calm thing. You didn't even have to tell her no. If you just like picked Memphis up and removed her from whatever she was doing that was wrong, mm -hmm. it was like she was hurt. Like, oh, you hurt my feelings. So with Memphis, when it came to like chewing on things and biting on things and trying to eat things, you only had to do it once or twice before she was like, I don't like that. I would rather chew on this toy mm -hmm. or I would rather do this. So we're trying to do that with Kira as well. Like I'm down here and I brought a couple of her toys down here and I brought her bed down here. So as she's trying to chew on things, you know, I'm kind of pulling her away with a calm no. And then I'm giving her something else, like just trying to redirect that energy somewhere else. And until she's about six months old, the putting everything in her mouth, it's just like having a two year old. Once they can hit, grab things, everything goes in the mouth, everything. Cause how else are they going to know what it is? Right. And I can tell that you, <laughs> have similar things to when people have kids like just the things that you were saying and the scoldings that you were doing and you're just yeah. like ah. i'm like oh you're just like the two like a parent with a two-year-old yeah yeah that's exactly what it is i mean you're you you have that level of and i try really not hard not to get like overly frustrated because there's really no point she's right. a puppy she doesn't know any better she's learning but the biggest frustrations have been she wants to put rocks in her mouth and i oh yeah it's no that, good and that is one of like, as crazy as it is, that's one of my big, has always been one of my biggest fears with dogs is dogs that eat rocks. Me too. So, like, I don't, yeah. I don't want to eat a rock. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's my biggest fear too. Like, man, if I eat a rock, then like, I'm, I'm kind of screwed. Right. And look at how much weight you gain. Cause you know, it's just stuck there for forever. That's what it is. <laughs> oh man, you, you've, you've gotten a little bit bigger. Oh, it's rocks. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it's rocks. And that's kind of the thing. Like. I, I've been when I take her out in the yard, I put her on the leash when we're potty training her. She's on the leash, so she can't really get away from me. And then we also have a 15 foot uh, tie out. 
So we'll put her on the tie out. She has like a 15 foot circle. She can go in. And this is when she's supposed to be going to the bathroom and doing those types of things. Mm -hmm. And then we'll bring her back inside, wait a few minutes, and then we can go back out inside and play. So we're trying to separate, you know, when you need to go out to go to the bathroom, we're not, you know, goofing off. You're going to the bathroom. We're going back inside. Oh. And then okay, now we're going outside. We're going to play. There's a you try to separate those things. And she's doing really, really. I cannot believe. Knock on wood. Hold on. Ready? I cannot believe how well this dog is doing with potty training. Good. That is awesome. She's 10 weeks old yesterday. And by the time this video or this video, this podcast goes up. By the time this podcast goes up, she'll be 11 weeks old. And she's had two accidents in the house. Is that pretty good ratio? That's that's amazing. Amazing. Like, I can't even believe. She already knows how to ring the bell to go outside. She runs straight to the back door when she has to go outside. That's ringing the bell? Yeah. Is there yeah, a we have a bell? bell? Yeah, we have a bell that hangs by the door. And when the bell rings, the door opens. You get to go outside. Like, that's, you know... That's how we go outside. So okay. every time we go out to potty, we ring the bell. But every time we go out to play, we don't touch the bell. So she is already associating. If she has to go to the bathroom, the bell means she can go outside and go to the bathroom. Hold on. Will she walk over there and, and ring the bell? Yeah. No way. Yeah. I taught Memphis the same thing. That's so crazy. Wow. It is one of the greatest things you can teach a dog. Because no matter where you are in the house, they'll ring the bell to go outside. Oh. The hardest part, though, is with really stubborn huskies, with really stubborn dogs in general, sometimes teaching a dog to ring the bell, they'll just ring the bell because they want to go out. They don't, it's not necessarily that they have to go to the bathroom, they just want to go out. So you have to work really hard to differentiate that. So that's why when we go out to go potty, so when she's on leash or when she's on the tie out, and I'm out there with her, she's never out there by herself. Jamie and I are always out there with her. Um, we ring the bell, we go out, go potty, we come back in. Usually wait five to ten minutes. Now we're going outside to play. We don't touch the bell. I don't make her touch the bell. We don't go near the bell. We just go outside and play. So she's already figured out, if I have to go to the bathroom, she runs to the door, she hits the bell. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I should have taught Blake that. Right? How, how do the people, when I see the video of the dog that goes and gets the beer out of the fridge and brings it to the dude and then takes the empty can and then opens the like trash compactor and puts it in there and then closes it and hits the trash compactor button, how are they doing that? It has a lot to do with teaching dogs what's called a mark. So you're teaching them a touch command and a mark command. Uh, it starts off with you can put like a plate on the ground. So you put a little round plate plate on the ground and you'll put a treat on it. As soon as their paw or whatever touches it, you'll use a command and you'll say touch. And over time, you make the plate and the circle smaller and smaller and smaller to where you're left with like the size of a quarter. You'll be able to tell the dog touch and the dog will touch the quarter. That's how you start that process. And then it becomes using that with other items and marking other items and giving items names. It's a long process. You have to have a very determined, intelligent breed to do those types of things. Border Collies are very good at those because they're very, very work driven. Border Collies love a yeah. job. If you can give their brains a challenge, they're the, I mean, Super Collies. My friend Sarah Carson, who has um, Hero the Collie. She was on America's Got Talent. She's, you can find her at the Super Collies. Um, real good friends with her. She has mainly Border Collies, and her dogs are insanely smart. Can do a lot of the things like you just said. You know, they can dance. They can do all these different tricks. They, that's a lot of what she does with training them. Huskies, that's a really hard thing to train them because they get distracted really easily. Well, how long, like, how long do you think it took the dude to train the dog to get the beer out of the fridge? Is that like a month or two, or is that like years? Um, you could probably border collies. You could probably train that in a couple of months. If they're the first, like I said, the first part bad. of it is training things like touch and mark, you know, when you're, when you're training them to touch things, that's once you can train them to do a touch, you can pretty much train them to touch and grab or pick up anything. So the biggest thing is getting like the core basics of that training down and then moving on from there. You know, okay, well now, now you know what touches, you know what grab is, you know what bring me is, you know, or whatever commands people are using. And then, you know, you do the, you want this cycle. I want you to touch this, touch this, touch this. And the dog will go and touch those things. And the next thing you're teaching them to open those things or whatever it is. That's crazy. That That's cool. So if you just work with your dog, then you, you can, you can teach your dog to do, do cool things. Will you teach Kira to do anything else? And real quick at home, I just want you guys to know that I have also uh, gone a long time with a, out having an accident in the house. So, you know, good job, Dan. 
you know? Yay. Yay! But did she learn anything else cool and neat, like the bell thing? Because that's neat. I've never heard about that before. Um, she already knows how to sit. She's learning patience. She has to learn her place in this house. Mm -hmm. um, Shelby is the oldest. Memphis is now not the baby, so Memphis is now the middle dog. Memphis is also learning that she's not the baby anymore. And then Kira is the youngest. So with my dogs, I tend to teach um, patience. And what that means is when we come inside from going to the bathroom, we get a treat. But everybody gets a treat because we all went out. We all came back in. Shelby gets a treat first. Memphis gets a treat second. Kira gets a treat third. So she's already figured out. She just comes in and she knows it's her turn. She's already figured that out. Um, she gets fed inside of her kennel because we're trying to get her to realize her kennel is a fun place, not a terrifying place where you scream your little head off. So, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I put her in the kennel and I feed her in there and I shut the door. So she's already figured out when I grab her food bowl, she goes straight to the kennel. She's like, oh, this, I got to go here. This, And I, I mean, honestly, what's today? Thursday, we've had her not even a week. We've had her four or five days. She's really smart. And it shows. <laughs> How much of it does she, is she going to learn a lot from her sisters? Yes. Oh, yeah. She has already learned. She's doing really well with what, um, like, downtime when they don't want to play and she tries to get them to play and they're in their back in their relax mode and not in a play mode. She's already kind of learned, okay, I'm going to leave you alone and I'm going to go play with my own toys or, you know, we'll play with her or whatever. And then, it, again, it's only been a couple of nights, but she's already learned at nighttime nighttime means we're going to bed we're not we're not playing no toys we're not taking toys to the bedroom we're just going to bed and she's kind of already figured that out as well that okay everybody's laying down i should lay down too so she's going to learn a lot of the routine behavior from the other dogs um same thing with walking i've already started walking her because i don't want her to be fearful of a leash or a collar so we're we've been walking like short 15 minute walks because she's still a baby she can't go for very far but I've been teaching her where she needs to walk in reference to the other dogs. And the nice thing is, is she doesn't want to walk in front of them. So she's already learning not to pull because she's walking at the same pace as them. Oh, okay. And I did see that the picture of them walking. It was so cute. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're doing pretty good. I mean, she, she fell that's, asleep. That's good, that she's, that's good that she's smart. Oh yeah. Where is she at physically right now? She's under my chair. Aww. She's sound asleep. How she cute. Sounds... Does she recognize you as being the owner? Like, this is your mine? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, I find it interesting that she seems to gravitate. And thank God, she seems to gravitate towards Jamie more than she does me already. Oh, yeah? But I thought, I thought well, Memphis is yours. Memphis, is, Memphis gravitates towards me. Shelby gravitates towards either of us. Shelby could go either way. <laughs> Shelby I wants that. Jamie to... Yeah, Shelby wants Jamie to pet her like in the morning. She really needs that time with him. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time she's like, she wants her time with me. Where Memphis is like, she wants me. Um, what about Oakley? Kira, Oakley kind of, Oakley didn't really gravitate towards either of us. But if she had to choose one, she usually chose Jamie. And I think it was because he kind of, he would always try to pet her more than I did. Which I always thought would like make her stray away from me. But she she accepted it more from him as well. I think what it was with Oakley was, and this sounds really bad, but with, with Oakley and the way her life was, I was the bad guy in the house. So I was the one that would take her to the vet and she'd have these bad experiences. And oh, I think okay. she associated me with that at times. Mm -hmm. So like if I would go to pet her or if I would go to do things, she would shy away from me because she didn't want to be caught. I've never heard Where you say that before. Yeah, see, Jamie never did those things with her. Jamie didn't take her to the vet. Jamie, I mean, he went to the vet with me and stuff, but I was the one that always did that. You know, I was the one that would a lot of the times try to brush her and have to hold her still to get mats out of her. So for me, for her, I was more of a not as fun person where Jamie was more of that fun person. So she did gravitate towards him more than me. Like her and I had our own relationship. Mm -hmm. I, I had a bond with Oakley. It was just a different type of bond right. than I had with the other dogs. Uh, here, uh, it's 100% Crystal. They all love Crystal more than me. And if Crystal told the cats to seize me, I'd be on the ground in ropes like Gulliver's Travel. They'd have me like pinned down in, in a second. <laughs> all of them. Every last one of them. Every She's last the one of them. So when we talked about the person that 
owned the dog. What, what, what do you call the lady you got the dog from? The purse, the, the dog inventor, the dog whisperer, the dog oh, maker, the maker of dogs? What, what? <laughs> Did she expose Kira to any adult dogs before, other than her mom, uh, before you introduced her to Shelby in Memphis? Yes. Um, so the breeder we got her from is, it's called Ninkasi Siberians. Um, and for anybody listening, before you hound them asking for puppies, they they do very limited breeding. They only breed maybe once a year, if that. So don't think you're going to get a puppy from them. They, You have to fill out like a five-page application. It is not like you just want a puppy, you can get it. There's a process to getting a puppy from these people. Is it pretty uh, prestigious? They well, yeah, they're they're very responsible breeders, so they uh they they don't just allow their puppies to go anywhere. Um, I've known them for a long time. Oh gosh, like I don't know, seven or eight years now at least. Um, they're part of our sled dog group. I I've taken photos of their dogs at sled dog races. Again, I like I said, I've known them a really long time, but they are because they are very good, responsible, reputable breeders. Mm -hmm. Um, they not only expose her to a lot of different noises, like she doesn't, she's not afraid of a vacuum cleaner. She's not, she's fearless right now. Um, they expose her to a lot of different things. But one of the other things is they have a lot of dogs. They have their husband and wife and they each have their own team that they run when they go dog sled racing. So I'm not sure exactly how many dogs they have at their kennel. I want to say they have 12 or 15. Um, and some of them are seniors. Some of them are older. Kira's grandma is there on the site. Her, her mom and her grandma were there. Um, so when the puppies got older, they got to interact with like their grandma. And then as they got even a little bit older, they got to interact with other dogs from, you know, that live at their house with them. Mm -hmm. So they did have good interaction with full grown adult dogs that weren't their mom. Oh, okay, good. So she already kind of knew what was going on. Yeah, she had some good socialization with other dogs. So tell me a little bit about when you went to go pick her up. It was how long was it to get there? She came from New Jersey, which is why Greg says he's going to call her nothing but Jersey girl. That's where she was born? She was born in New Jersey. Oh. And initially, when she turned eight weeks old, she turned eight weeks old on what would have been Oakley's 15th birthday. Um, we were planning on going and picking her up the day after that. So she turned eight weeks old on May 8th. And on May 9th, which was a Thursday, we were going to be picking her up. We were going to leave Wednesday. We were going to drive the 14-hour drive, pick her up, spend some time with them, spend the night at a hotel, leave on Friday, drive all the way to Ohio, spend some time with my friend Andy and Kristen, spend the night there, drive all the way home. It was going to be chaotic. Greg was going to come stay with our dogs. And then some things kind of fell out of place and it was like, this just, it, this is going to be really hard. A friend, they were going to a dog show in Bratvia, New York the next weekend. So she's, you know, nine weeks old by then, but that's only like seven hours from our house. And we're like, well, we could wait, which is no big deal, mm. you know, and just go get her then. And then it turns out that another friend of mine, who's a breeder here in Michigan, who uh, their kennel is Braylon Siberians. They were going to the same dog show. And they're really good friends with the breeders we got her from. And, you know, I've known them for a long time as well. And they offered to transport her from New York back down to or back to Michigan, down near Flint, Michigan, just south of Flint, Michigan. Uh -huh. So we only had to drive three and a half hours to get her. So they transported her with their dogs as well? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. They okay. had their dogs at the show and they a couple of their dogs won a couple different awards at the show. Um, and then, yeah, they transported her back here. They brought an extra kennel. When you say trans, her. when you say transport, I have a visual of like a box, which is like holes poked in it. Or <laughs> no, they have a big van. They have a big cargo. One of them, uh, the tall rooftop cargo vans. Oh, okay. So it's all spacious. Yeah. And the whole back of it is outfitted for like the dogs and stuff. And I believe they have a bed in the back of theirs as well for them to sleep in. So it's kind of like a camper van, but not. It's like a converted into a dog van. <laughs> oh, cool. So you meet at the Walmart parking lot, and then are you no, just we like... Met we, met, we met him at their house. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> so you guys meet up, and are you just a big ball of nerves, excitement, tears? What's what's happening? It was a lot. Like, all the way down there, we kept going through a lot of different emotions. About 15 minutes before we got there, Jamie goes, okay, all those feelings you've been telling me you've been having for the past week, I have all of them right now. Oh. I'm like... Oh, the happy, sad, crying, nervous, Just don't everything. know what the heck we're doing, excited, everything all at once. And he goes, yeah, all of it right now. I'm like, oh, good timing. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Um, I was nervous. I don't know. I was nervous and excited at the same time. Like part of me was like, what are we thinking? We're so busy anymore and we have so much going on and we're, we're coming to California in a month. We're coming to California in a month. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. So like I'm, I have a lot of things going through my head. We have all these projects going on at the house. You know, I work, I do as crazy as it is, as fun as our lives look, I work a lot. I am stuck at my computer a lot. Yes. So there was all there was that concern of, you know, what am I thinking? Do I have enough time for a puppy? Should we do this? Should we not do this? I know there's going to be the people out there that are going to hate me because I didn't get a rescue. And there's going to be the people that are going to be excited. I got a puppy. And it's like all of those emotions were kind of happening. But once we finally had her, you know, what? we did the right thing. I knew what was right for our family right now. And she was what we needed. She really was like even Jamie and I are it's it's unreal the difference that she has made in just the short time she's been at this house. We had an empty void in this house. We we knew it was there and it was hard to ignore. And I think a lot of our audience could see it, too. Like, I can't tell you how many people told me they stopped watching after Oakley passed away. We stopped watching because Oakley's gone, which Thanks for the reminder, guys. But, <laughs> you know, that's hard for me to hear. You know, it's it's hard for me to read. And, you know, you can say comments don't matter and all that stuff. But you know, you know as well as I know that when you read stuff, people write. Yeah, there's time. you're healing. It yeah. And the thing is yeah. with them is they can walk away from the pain and you can't. Yeah. And it's been a big right. void. I'm glad you brought that up because I didn't want to bring it up. But it's been going on for a long time of you trying new avenues to fill that, which we all knew what right. the answer was. But right. it's just hard. You can't just like, like you can't, you can't, you can't die and then have a new girlfriend the next day. Right, exactly. So like, and I, I get it. The, and that's the thing. Like you can't just, you can't just transition immediately. It doesn't, it doesn't work. And it does, it takes time. And then it's the same right. thing. When, when is the right time? Do you know when the time is right? Is it the right time? It was the right time for us a couple of months ago, but things just didn't work out the way we had planned a few, you know, a few months ago, we were supposed to have a puppy in March. And again, we didn't tell anybody and I'm glad we didn't because it didn't work out. And, you know, I have people that are like, why didn't you tell us? And I'm like, well, because if something happened, I didn't want it to be, Oh, sorry, something happened. Like with the first litter that we were waiting on, which was from a different breeder. Um, there was five puppies born, I think, but there was only one girl and we wanted a girl. And that girl was meant to go to a show home. And I said, you know, let her go to the show home. That's where she was meant to go. So we didn't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, we're, we're, we're just not telling anybody that we could have had, you know, that we were waiting on that puppy. And then when it was, even with Kira, it was like, I'm not saying anything till like two days before she gets here. I'm not, because what if something were to happen? And there was options. Yeah, up until right, right before, there were still options. Yeah. Yeah, we had a couple options. We had a couple different breeders. Uh, Jay Lirin, Jer Jerilyn, Jay Lirian. I can never say their name right. Siberians had one that I was going to fill out an application for, even though we were already on the list for Kira. And then I kind of backed off of that one. I'm like, no, we're, we're going to wait. I really want this puppy from Ninkasi Siberians. So we waited. But there was there was a lot of different options. And even after Kira was, was born and we decided we were going to get her, uh, Memphis's breeders reached out to me and they said, we're, we're going to have puppies in August if you want on the list. And I said, well, they'll be born and they actually should be born anytime now. And then they'll be ready to go in August. And I'm like, you know, we, we, we decided to go with the uh, Ninkasi Siberians and they're all friends. So like, nobody's like, oh, you're never getting a puppy from me because you went with somebody else. Mm. They're just happy. You know what I mean? Like they're happy that we chose a responsible, reputable breeder. Right. Real quick before we go on, just off the top of your head, just yes or no answer. Is there a chance that you could have another puppy in your family before the end of this year? Yes or no? Maybe. Really? Oh, wow. And I've never asked this before of you. Really? There could be a chance that maybe there's one more, like, it's not off the radar? Um, We've talked about it quite a bit. We haven't talked about it. No, not you and I. Jamie and I have talked about it quite a bit. Should we um, be talking about this? It don't matter. Okay. I'm still not going to tell anybody unless it's actually going to happen until two days before it happens. Okay. So if so, then tell me, tell me off, <laughs> tell me later. Right. Okay. So, um, so back to the story no. real quick. So you get there and is the puppy jumping out of the back of the van into your arms? Like, thank you. And stuff like that. No, she's a super well-rounded dog. That's what people don't understand about when you use a responsible, reputable breeder. She's not, 
jumping and crazy and you know she was happy and excited to see us and you know like she was she really likes people so she was like oh there's people i really like people this is fun but she wasn't crazy and screaming and all that stuff she'd had a long ride too she'd been in that car for seven and a half hours right you filmed the very first interaction yes oh that is well, awesome i'm gonna have to check that out we, we filmed when we got her in the car we didn't film like right when we got there because we didn't want to film at their house okay so like the the moment we put her in the car, literally, she's in the car, and we turned around, and we're like, here she is. She's in the car. Okay, but As you we were already had hugged her and stuff then. what? Tell me that moment. Tell me what happened when you first laid eyes on her. She was definitely a black and white husky. The first thing I said to Jamie was, you know, I didn't want a black and white husky. No, what happened to the red one? Weren't we championing a red one? I wanted a red one, but Jamie wanted a black and white one. So, like, And then he told me the morning we were leaving, he's like, yeah, but I wanted blue eyes. And I'm like, are you kidding me? He's like, yeah, I told you I wanted blue eyes. And I'm like, I could have just got the other dog. (laughs) (laughs) And then you played with her all the way home because I saw those photos and she looks so cute. Yeah, she was very rambunctious all the way home. And then we were hoping she would take a nap before we got home so that she would be able to play with the other dogs Mm -hmm. when she got here. And she did. And she did really good when she got here. We did film the moment that I have on film the moment Shelby and Memphis saw her for the first time. So they're the last to know. There's no way that you, is there anything that you can do? Cause you, you set up that, like we're expecting video and stuff. And are the dogs smart enough to understand that another dog is coming in? Or is that just not realistically like capable of a dog to understand? I don't think they really know what's going on. Like, I don't, I don't think they knew we were getting another dog or cause like I would play some of the videos that they uploaded of the puppies playing and stuff like that. But you know, so they would hear it, but they hear puppy noises on the internet all the time. Cause I watch all kinds of puppy stuff on the internet, you know, like it's, <laughs> they just, I don't think they have any idea. I think the biggest thing is, is when I came in, cause I came in with the camera and the plan was to have Jamie come in with the puppy. So if you watch the video, I'm gone to the snow dogs. When I come in, they are glued to me because they can smell the puppy on me. Ooh, you've been cheating. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So I made sure to come in and like, you know, I was talking to them and then Jamie came in with the puppy and they were like, oh, my God, it's real. Because I always whenever I go and pet other dogs and come home, I always make the joke and I'm like, I didn't bring it home for you guys. I'm sorry. And then this one, I'm like, look, I really brought her home for you. <laughs> poor, poor dogs. I, I, I can just see it from um, Memphis and Shelby's view. Ding dong. Oh, someone's at the door. It's uh, yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Kira. I, uh, I live here now. So uh, move <laughs> over because <laughs> I, uh, I live here now. Oh, you think that's your spot? Well, now it's my spot. Do they understand that she's a puppy? Yes. Yeah, 100%. How can you tell? Can you tell by the way they handle her? Yep. I can tell by the interactions and the way Shelby tolerates her. Mm -hmm. Shelby doesn't tolerate what she does to her uh, the way, like if if Lana is here, like Eric's dog, Lana, she's not a puppy. She's a year, a little over a year old. If Lana does the same things to Shelby that Kira is doing to Shelby, Shelby literally will tell Lana, back off. This is enough that that we're not doing this. With Kira, she does this thing where it's like this low rumble. It's not a growl. And I always have to explain to people, she's not growling. You've Mm. never heard. I mean, I've heard Shelby growl, but I don't think I've ever caught it on camera, like a real Shelby growl. She does this vocally rumble thing that sounds like a growl, but it's just Shelby. And she'll, it's like this throaty noise she makes and she'll do it and she'll just stare straight ahead. And she'll just make this noise and Kira's like biting her tail and she's making this noise. And then she'll just turn and look at her and make the noise in her face. Like, you need to stop. Uh, and Kira's like, oh, 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 I won't do this anymore. <laughs> what's the next step after that, like physical contact? So she deliberately well, there, holds there is off. No next step. There is no next step after that. It will not get to that point. And that's, I think, what a, what a lot of people also don't understand. If I think that it's going to get to that next point, there will there will be a uh, I will put a stop to it. But she I will deliberately either... stops at that point to show you like, hey, like, could you stop? So she gets cut some slack because she's a puppy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she definitely does. Even Memphis, like she well, Kira really, really wanted to snuggle with Shelby like so bad the other day. Shelby would be laying down and Kira would just curl up right next to her and lean into her. And Shelby would just do her little grunt thing and get up and move. And she'd go a few (laughs) feet away and lay down. And Kira would get up and lay down and Shelby would grunt and get up and move. And then eventually she just gave up. Shelby was like, fine, whatever, just lay on me. So I have a really cute picture of them laying together. Unlike 
Memphis, who when Kira laid on Memphis, Memphis's like whole body went stiff. And she's <laughs> looking at me like she's touching me and I don't know what to do. Am I supposed to move? Am I I don't know what to do, mom? And then all of a sudden you just saw like, oh, she's snuggling. Oh, I like snuggling. Okay, this is fine. And she just like went back to sleep. <laughs> Do they understand that she's here to stay? Like, how how long do they have to visit for? Does, does Kira have to be there for before they realize that? I think they've already realized that. I think once I feed her a couple times in the house, they pretty much real. And like we've gone on walks together and we're doing things together. I think they've pretty much realized she's not going anywhere. Who's more accepting? Memphis, by yeah. far. I, she, almost to the point where she like doesn't care. Yeah, Memphis plays happening. with her. Memphis, you know, Kira can bite at Memphis's feet and kind of play with her and get her going. And Memphis will actually play where. She'll bite at Shelby's feet and Shelby just ignores her. Shelby's like, Shelby will play with her and she has played with her. But, well, I mean, if, I don't know if you saw the video I sent you. Shelby t- teaching her how to dig. Shelby likes yes. to dig with her. <laughs> that was quick digging. Yeah, I think secretly she just wants to make that hole big enough to push the puppy in it barrier. But <laughs> Right, I can understand that. <laughs> Does Kira have different food? Uh, Yep, she's on a puppy food right now. So she, uh, actually, all three dogs are on different foods right now. <laughs> Will she will she eat out of that same type of maize bowl? Yep, she has a little pink one that I got her. Oh, that's cute. It, but it has that same cutout so the dogs don't inhale their food. Is that what it does? It slows them down. Yeah, and she uh, same thing. She she does want to try to inhale her food, so it's teaching her how to eat a little bit slower. She has the exact same bowl that Memphis has. Only Memphis has a green one. Kira has a pink one. So. Do you have to like get her shots and stuff, or does she come with shots, or is that a thing that that dogs have? She has some of them. She has all of her shots up until her eight week point. Like they get certain shots before they come home. And Mm. then when she's 16 weeks old, just before 16 weeks old, she'll have to go in and she'll have to get, I believe it's her rabies shot. And there's one other one, I think. I don't remember what they are. I have them written down. She did go to the vet uh, just Tuesday. She went to the vet for what's called that picture. (laughs) Uh, She had to go for her puppy wellness check. And partially because everybody at the vet's office was like begging me to bring her in. (laughs) Oh, yeah. There was no wellness check. They were just smiling because they were rubbing new puppy. Right. Um, Yeah. The picture that I posted, that's actually their doctor. That's Dr. Danielle. She's Um, the one that's the doctor for all the dogs? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay. That's good. I've never never seen her. I I figured it was some old dude. Yeah. Well, no, no. It's (laughs) her and her husband. Her husband is Dr. Ryan. But her husband does a lot of the surgeries and stuff. So he doesn't really do as many office calls he's the guy in the back that's saving everybody's life yeah, and doing thankless all job stuff. man that, that's got to be so hard you know i i honestly i don't know how they they do it they offered me a job a couple years ago when their office manager retired she'd been there like 20 years mm-hmm. and when she retired uh dr danielle had we'd kind of made the joke and she's like you could come work here you could do this and i'm like no. i don't I don't think I could do it. I can't even be in the vet's office when somebody comes out of one of those rooms and they're crying and you know what just happened. Yes. I'm like, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. No. I can't do it. No, I, I couldn't do it either. That, that's hard. She looks so, I mean, she looks so happy. It's, it's, it's a hard job, but at the same time, it's a lot like working in rescue. You can't always think about the sad things. You also have to think about all of the animals you're helping that you're helping, and all right. the wonderful things that come out of it. Like, and I think that really helps with them being able to do what they do. Plus that vet's office is amazing. Like the staff is amazing. The doctors are amazing. They're very caring, compassionate people. They're, um, they're an accredited veterinary hospital. They're actually the only accredited veterinary hospital in our area. And the only way to get the accreditation has to do with like, not just the care that they offer, but the compassion, the cleanliness, the, there's so many things that you have to pass to be able to become an accredited veterinary hospital. And uh, they, they got accredited last year and they're just, they're amazing. Like they're, they're just amazing people. Good. That's good. So before you guys got Kira, did she have a name? Do do the original like dog makers <laughs> have have a, a name like they name everybody? Because you have to keep track of them somehow, right? Yeah. So they were born March thirteenth. So they were born just before St. Patrick's Day. So they went with like an Irish themed name to nickname the puppies. Oh, it's Guinness. And, yeah, I, oh, I Guinness. said the same thing. It should be. I'm like, oh no! Her name was actually um, Darcy. Interesting, because it's just an Irish name. Yeah, yeah. So they went with, and they actually did have a puppy that they were calling Kira. Oh, really? Are you serious? Yeah, yeah they oh, did. Oh, that was almost fate. They messed you up. 
Yeah, they had Kira and Darcy and Deegan. And why can't I remember the other puppies' names? I could picture them. I just can't remember their names. Wow. Have you ever talked about that? Does Memphis have a different name before Memphis? Or is that not something you want to talk about? I don't know if they actually called what they called Memphis. I would have to ask Anne what they actually called her before that. I don't know. The difference between Memphis's breeder and the breeder I got Kira from is mm-hmm. Memphis's breeder isn't as active on social media. Like, so Kira's breeder doesn't have, they don't have a website. They don't have a Facebook page. They don't do any of that because they only do limited breedings and they mainly sell dogs to people that they know and other show homes. Mm-hmm. Um, so they don't really need a website and all of that stuff. Uh, the breeder I got Memphis from, they have a website, but it's because they're a big part of the Siberian Husky Club of the United States and the Siberian Husky Club of Greater Detroit. So they have a website because they have representation for that. But they're not as active in posting things. I literally, besides the fact that I had live feed to Kira, I watched these dogs grow up from day one because Laura and Romeo would post pictures of pictures of the puppies, videos of the puppies of here's their first interaction with this. The first time they're getting their nails done, the first time they're getting introduced to the vacuum cleaner. (laughs) So they post tons of pictures and video online. So I have pictures of her from day one. Will anyone get to see those? Will anyone get to see those, those videos and pictures ever? I think, when I do the story of how we got her, like when we got Memphis a couple of weeks after we got her, we did like a big story, oh, um, which will actually be a lot of repeated from what's here. But uh, I still like to have those up on the channel. So it'll kind of be like her introduction of why we picked her, you know, why we chose to do what we did, why we chose to go with a puppy and then where we got her from, who we got her from, all of that information. And then we'll probably share like a lot of those little videos and clips and talk about stuff like that. Is she still sleeping right now? She is still sleeping right now, yeah. What's the sleep schedule like? Is it like an infant where she's up every three hours during the night? Um, You wouldn't believe this, but she slept for a full eight hours last night. Is that good? Yeah, because that means <laughs> yeah. I slept for eight hours last night. <laughs> she actually does really, really well at night. At night, She's been sleeping really, 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 really well. During the day, she'll be up for about an hour, and then she's out for about an hour. And then she's like, you know, we were... We were We were supposed to start the podcast at about noon. Mm. She fell asleep at noon. She woke up right when you and I started, you know, at one o'clock or whatever time it was. Full of energy. Yeah. And then she fell asleep a little bit after we started doing this. So it's, you know, up and down, up and down, up and down. It's either 100% or zero. Yeah. So basically what you do is you, as soon as she falls asleep, you try to get as much work done as you can. And then when she wakes (laughs) up, you play with her and you pay attention to her because, you know, she's a puppy and she needs the interaction. So we're doing stuff and we're playing and we're having a good time. And then as soon as she goes to sleep, you're like, okay, now I got to do, do everything I can this morning when she took her nap this morning, I'm like, I'm taking a shower. (laughs) Yep. You're like, run. Yep. Smoking like a, like a person with a, with a real child. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One hundred percent. Will there be anything special you'll do with her? Because like when people have lots of kids, I don't know because I only had one. Um, they change their parenting with each child. With this one, will she will she like learn new tricks? Will will she be like a showy type dog? Will she get to run through the tunnels and the agility course? What what do, what can we expect from her? She's. I definitely want to teach her agility. She's already fearless. She already tried. I have a teeter in the backyard, a teeter totter for the dogs in the backyard that's actually broken. Uh that we're going to fix, but she already climbed up on it. No fear. Jamie got the tunnel out the other day. She already went through it. She could care less. So I do think we're going to do agility with her. I am going to take puppy training classes with her, which I didn't actually do with Memphis with Memphis. I just did everything on my own. Um, but I am going to take her to puppy training classes more for just, I want her to interact with people and other dogs than the training. Like I can train her. I'm not worried about that. Ken from McCann dogs is also giving me access to some of their like training videos and stuff, which is going to be really cool. So I can teach her a little bit more advanced stuff. Oh, that would Um, be cool. I have a feeling she'll do agility. I kind of want to get her. There's other things like from the Siberian Husky club that you can uh do like you can get them certified as a pack dog where they have to do so many miles carrying a backpack and i always want i always thought it would be fun to do with shelby in memphis and i I just never did it and one of these dogs i'll actually do but like you have to do so much hiking with them with a they have to carry their own pack and you have to do like so many treks that are a mile and then so many that are two miles and so many that are five miles and then 10 miles and then you have to do one overnight trip where you can't stay in like a camper you have to stay in an actual tent on a trail well that's crazy 
Yeah, and then they get certified as it's like a certified pack dog, and they get a little patch and a little thing that says, you know, you did all these, you accomplished all these things with your dog, which is just, it's not for anybody but me and the dog, but it's also this, you know, it's gives you, I don't know, a goal, something fun to do. <laughs> you can get her certified so she can wear that little barrel around her neck like they uh, have in the in the cartoons, and it could bring you hot chocolate in the snow. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> when you say more advanced tricks, do you mean like how we were watching that dog show, remember, on TV? Westminster I don't I don't know remember where they were at it was the dog show and they were chicaning through the little like poles is that advanced like you can get her to do that Shelby can do that that's neat yeah Shelby can do that Memphis can almost do it Shelby can do it Shelby can weave through the poles where they go in between all the poles and stuff um I have a set of training weave poles here so she'll she'll learn how to do all that stuff. It'll it'll be I have a lot of the backyard agility stuff. Jamie and I are planning on rebuilding the A-frame that we built last year and then broke in the wintertime. Right. Uh, we're planning on rebuilding that because one, it gives them shade and two, it's nice to have in the yard. Um, and then we were talking about building a dog walk as well, which I don't know if I want to put one up in the yard or not because I, I always feel like the, they jump off the side. I don't want that to happen. <laughs> I, I'd like to request an item. Um, um, think about a tunnel because those tunnels are super neat. When the dog goes into the tunnel and he comes flying out the other side. You need I it. have one. Yeah. Okay. Just set up the tunnel and, and then I'm happy. Yeah, I have one. I have one in the yard and then I have a chute as well that they don't use anymore. So we're actually going to convert the chute to a different type of tunnel. Oh, that's a, that'll be cool. Will she get to pull the sleds? Because that's in her, right? Yeah, she'll get to pull a sled, but she won't be able to start doing any of that till she's about a year old. And even at a year old, you know, between eight months and a year old, she'll learn how to wear a harness and things like that. But she won't actually be able to, like, pull with a lot of weight because oh, her growth okay. plates have to close before she can really, really get into that. Okay, um, that makes sense. So, so, so it, it'll she'll probably have some have some fun with it this winter later in winter um i'll hook her up with memphis and like put stuff on the sled and then walk them around the yard or walk them up and down the street it's gonna be so cute yeah so she'll get some experience with it like she could probably pull john matthew on the sled but um by next year it'll be more of something that she'll do since she's younger than everybody will she eventually be out in front where she's like like setting the pace like let's go most likely, as the other dogs age and get older and they don't want to be in front anymore. I mean, that's pretty much what happened when we got Memphis. Shelby was always my lead dog mm-hmm. because she knew how to do everything. And then when we got Memphis, Shelby just didn't want to be in front anymore. So we swapped places and Memphis became the lead dog. And Shelby could have cared less. Like, she didn't mind. So it, it, it'll probably happen. It'll Over time, once she learns how to do everything, it'll probably happen. It's interesting with every like introduction, even here with the cats, that you introduce to the family a new pet. The whole dynamics of everything changes. Oh, yeah, very much so. There's a lot of things that, you know, everything gets done a little bit differently. And I think like with dogs, it's really important to remind your dogs that were already here that that you still care. Like I've been making sure I haven't changed anything I've done with Memphis. Every morning, Memphis still gets her Memphis snuggles. And after she eats, we still snuggle on the floor together. Like, she still gets the moments that she always has gotten. You know, when I take a shower, she's allowed to come in. She lays outside of the shower when I take a shower. So, like, she's still allowed to be in her spot Mm -hmm. and make sure that I don't disappear down the drain or whatever she thinks is going to (laughs) happen. <laughs> That's great. Uh, and same with, with Shelby. Shelby's still getting her special treatment when it comes to treats, and she's still getting cheese on her food. And, you know, she's still getting her, you know, Jamie's still spending time with her in the morning, like he does every morning when he drinks his coffee. Like, so they're still, we try to make sure that they don't lose out on the things they're used to because they ha- we don't want them to feel left out. Right, and that's understandable. Has Kira had any human food? We don't feed our dogs human food. What are you oh, talking about? Oh, I don't know. Those bags of cheese. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, Jamie totally wasn't eating lunch the other day and gave her a piece of his sandwich. <laughs> the first thing I said was, really? You're going to teach her this that early? <laughs> so what's the vibe like in the house? Is it just all like just happiness and love and greatness? It's chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> but in a good way, right? It's chaotic in a good way. Yeah, because we've also got like so many people that want to come over and meet her. So it's like we've got people coming in and out of the house. We've got the dogs. Plus, we've got, you know, I was telling you before we started the podcast, we've got these contractors that are coming in. We're getting our electrical box upgraded and we're getting this mini split ceiling air conditioning unit installed. So we're getting quotes on that. So we've had contractors coming in, people coming in. My sister-in-law has brought my nephew over twice. Like, it's just, it's chaotic. It's, it's pure chaos. 
for God's sake, she's going to meet a lot of people when we go to California in yeah. a month. Where oh, that's going to be so crazy. Let's live that out real quick. So you're going to get into the RV and drive all the way into my neighborhood. We're not even bringing the RV. We're just bringing the Jeep. We're going to hotel it across America. Really? Yeah, because sure we don't have an RV. Are you sure this is what you want to do? No. No. <laughs> Is there a chance that you're not coming to California for PetCon? Oh, no, we're coming to California. I how, I can't let those people down. Do you know how many people already have tickets to be there? Oh, it's like that? Yeah. I'll be there. Well, yeah, that's because you're coming with me. Yeah, I'm going to work the booth. Yeah, you're going to help be the me booth, rent babe. the dogs. <laughs> yeah, I'll just be the booth, babe. I'll hold everybody's phone and take everybody's picture and just keep that the line moving. Perfect. Yep. I didn't even think about that, but you know what? You're hired. <laughs> You'll, it'll be fun. Here's the consequences for all you guys are going to be there, though. You will get one flip around camera of a selfie of me um, that you have no choice in. And then you will get a cute picture that I will take either vertically or horizontally your choice of you and the new dogs. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll totally come and do that. That's I thought that was the whole point of me showing up is just so I could what? be the booth babe. Yeah. Well, I knew you were going to come and help and do that stuff, but I didn't think about like helping with the line. Because yeah. with at PetCon, there's actually a meet and greet line. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll have like, I think it's an hour or an hour and a half that we're, we actually have to be at our booth. And then other than that, we, we get to wander around the floor at PetCon, which is super fun too. So like take pictures of the dogs with other people, but yeah. So anybody that's listening, we're coming to Los Angeles, California on June 22nd for PetCon. You can get your tickets at PetCon.co. Yeah. PetCon.co. And, uh, I don't know how much they are. I already forgot. <laughs> You'll be able to find us. <laughs> It'll be easy. <laughs> the dachshund's going to be there. Who? Cruise the Dachshund? Cruise the Dachshund. I'm not familiar with Cruise the Dachshund. He was the one that won the People's Choice Award when we didn't win it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Every, I, I, same thing. I go through the motions every other day of why did I say yes to this? What were we thinking? I, it wouldn't have been bad if we wouldn't have had the puppy, but now we have the puppy and we've got to drive across remember, the country. Remember the moral of 2019. It was not to say no. Remember that? It was not exactly. to say no. That was the thing. Yep. You said you were not going to say no. And then yep. you went to Canada and had Poontine. Yeah, and, and an great. amazing time. So yeah, it'll be we great. We'll Niagara have a Falls. fun time. Yeah, Niagara Falls, right. We'll have a great yeah. time. I'll make it a fun time, I promise. And maybe even this time, we'll try in and out Maybe, yeah. I mean, that's, why the heck not? Right? How many years have it, you come here and not had in and out I know, right? It, it'll, it'll be an experience, that's for sure. I mean, it's... We're not bringing the camper. We're definitely going to, we're going to hotel it across and uh, it's going to be an experience. It is. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm we're excited. Gonna, we're going to drive straight there. So we're literally just going to drive every day there. And then on the way home, we're going to take our time a little bit, but not too much because by the time we get home, we have to turn around and get on an airplane without the dogs and fly back out to California. All right, so that'll do it for this week's episode of PuppyCast. You can go over to our Facebook page at CC Mouse Podcast and leave us any questions and comments. Hit up ccmousepodcast.com where you can see notes and minutes about the story, even pictures of the things that we talk about. Hit us up on Instagram at CC Mouse Podcast. So until next week, we'll see you guys later. Same mouse time, same mouse podcast. Bye. Bye. Yeah, we did a thing and she slept through the whole thing. She did. <laughs> <laughs>